Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Bootstrap. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, recent announcement by AMD regarding their new card, a uh, new GPU that they are releasing, the um, RX 480. And uh, from everything that's been released by AMD regarding this card, including the specs and benchmarks, uh, this card for $200 is going to be an absolute, as they say, cracker. Now, keep in mind, corporations never lie to us, are always in it for our best interest, and will always take care of the consumer. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's the only caveat. Until we actually see these cards uh, in the hands of some uh, YouTubers or some people who are actually going to provide some good benchmarks that aren't uh, released by AMD themselves, you know, we'll take everything with a grain of salt. But from what everything that AMD is saying, uh, this card for $200 is going to be an absolute beast. Uh, VR, if that's your thing, this card is going to oh, make yeah. it uh, something to do. However, I find it kind of kind of ironic that they talk about this is going to make affordable VR. I think people need affordable VR headsets first. Uh, right now, if you've got a budget of, uh, you know, seven to $800 for your PC, uh, you know, VR is really not something you're thinking about. Maybe down the line, but, you know, we, we might be ta talking a couple of years before uh, VR gets to the price point where it's going to be affordable for your um, you know, not just your enthusiast, but your, your you know, your casual to uh, occasional PC gamer, because right now that's it's a pretty heavy investment. So I know right now that's the in thing. So everybody's touting it. You know, everybody's got to sell some VR. I, I kind of understand how that is. Uh, so it made no surprise that AMD, you know, one of their big selling points is this is going to be a two hundred dollar card that's going to allow you to have a premium um, as they say, premium VR experience, not the, not the shite VR experience where, you know, the, the premium, that's what you're getting, the premium experience. But anyway, it, it's a good thing. I think it's tremendous. I think it's, it, you know, for a chance for people to be able to do, let's forget the VR gaming aspect of it, but if this card is as powerful as uh, AMD says it, it is, for $200 to be able to have a card that is going to be, uh, give you, you know, 14, potentially 1440p, uh, gaming potential, uh, you know, so your five to six hundred dollar rig, instead of being a you know a decent, hopefully 1080 machine, uh, goes to becoming a, um, to a 1440 uh, machine, which is pretty awesome. And I also really think That'll what's interesting this time second. around is the strategy that they're going with. Um, look, A and D, <laughs> excuse me, Nvidia came out guns blazing. They came out with the sledgehammer. Uh, the GTX 1080 is an absolute beast of a card. There's really no denying that. Uh, you know, now that it is actually officially out, uh, people have bought it, put it in their rigs, and, and, you know, you're actually seeing some real-world benchmarks, not just benchmarks released by, you know, websites or, um, you know, by the company themselves. So they there's proof in the pudding. They, they're showing what they have and, and what they produce. The 1070, of course, is also looking really nice, but haven't seen it yet uh, it's not available yet so uh, again we'll see if it performs um, as well as the uh, GTX uh, 1080 did but again with the 1080 you're talking about a card right now that uh, if you went to buy it uh, let's face it you're looking at spending over a thousand dollars unless you go to a you know somewhere retailer like Micro Center or something like that uh, because uh, it's being price gouged uh, like a mofo right now so you know there's <laughs> the suckers edition of uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars, which I, I can't, can't justify at all why you would want to buy uh, that card, but uh, you know, not wait for the aftermarket cards with uh, uh, better cooling solutions and p potentially better power delivery as well. But you know, l let's forget about all that. I mean, I, the main thing I wanted to talk about is the strategy that AMD is using. They're they're going to go ahead. And if you live in the United States, I'm sure you've heard of a place called Las Vegas. And it has some of the, you know, I, I, world's biggest and swankiest um, casinos where, you know, you got people from all over the world that come just to gamble to that one place. And the biggest earners for those places, and in fact, I think for most casinos, isn't necessarily their big poker tables or their blackjack tables. It's their penny slots. 
Why? Because just about anybody can spend money on a on a penny slot. It, I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. There's a ton more people who can afford to go uh, play the penny slots compared to people who can go and play ten or hundred dollar hands of uh, blackjack. And uh, that's kind of AMD's strategy, I think, in this particular time. They're like, look, we're not going to beat the 1080, at least not now. And we probably aren't going to even beat the 1070, at least not now. Uh, you know, Vega coming out next year could be a different story altogether, but we all know by that time there's a very good chance that NVIDIA is going to have their 1080 Ti or, you know, Titan, the new Titan versions, which have already, you know, some benchmarks for those have been, uh, not benchmarks, but some uh, uh, specs have been rumored to be released. So, you know, AMD maybe is doing the right thing, not even bothering to kind of go after the NVIDIA's flagship cards, but kind of go the other route, uh, uh, where, uh, somewhere where NVIDIA recently has not been so good, and that's uh, the lower tier market. Um, and, you know, that's that's a smart move. Uh, rather than getting your butt handed to you, um, why not do what you do better? AMD does price to performance better. They pretty much always have. And they're kind of doing the smart thing here. Rather than kind of taking the bait and getting themselves in a situation where they're not going to win, um, they're taking the approach of let's do the sensible thing and go in an area where we are really competitive and that is price to performance and you know if you've got a again five six hundred dollar budget you know 1070 is a nice card at 370 dollars or whatever it may be once the aftermarket come out but if you can get that kind of performance or close to it for 200 dollars, it just leaves you more money to build a better well-balanced system and i think that's the key to having a, a really good experience. I mean, that's not brain surgery. People know that, but I think that's that's important. So really, I, I, I kind of want to commend AMD. I know I've, you know, pretty much since I've started PC gaming, have only bought NVIDIA cards. Now, that's only been the last four or five years. So yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I haven't been doing it as long as a lot of people. So, but I've always kind of thought of the... NVIDIA cards as better. Now, this time around, with this price point uh, that AMD is touting and the specs that they're touting, it's making me think that, you know, it, it's something I might look into. Because, again, this is their base model that they're coming out with, with this 480. You know, when the 490 hit, you know, if the performance is even better or on par of a 1070 or a 1080, you know, it, it'll be worth looking at because hopefully AMD is going to be able to keep their price in an area where it's going to be enticing. Because the, the fact of the matter is, having used NVIDIA cards, there's a familiarity there of what to expect. And it is always a little bit, you know, difficult and sometimes even scary to, to you know, kind of move away and try something different because you just don't know you know you you can see specs all you want but until you've actually had hardware in your machine that you've used it's hard to tell how it's going to be you know how it's going to perform for you until you've actually had it and i think that's a that's a pretty big thing uh, the comfort level to kind of move from one brand to another um and i think that is that's not just for you know for me personally i think that that's true for a lot of people so I'm very curious to see what these cards can do. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm planning to do here in the short run. Right now, my 970s, you know, I are running just fine. I'm not having any problems uh, running games. But, you know, obviously I updated my CPU recently. And eventually I do plan on um, updating my graphics cards. But, you know is it a need at this point not really i mean you know my cards are still running fine and you know should run fine for the foreseeable future uh but you know let's face it, it with pc gaming it is something that's a bug and uh, sometimes you can't help yourself you've got to go ahead and uh, 
<laughs> go ahead and get the upgrade even if you don't really need it and I don't think I'm the only one <laughs> who feels that way so uh, but anyway guys as I lose my voice and uh, get down by some dogs <laughs> excuse me I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get out of here but I'd be very curious to see in the comments what you guys think uh, do you think AMD is doing a smart thing uh, going this route and um, I is it really a foregone conclusion that you know Nvidia is just gonna basically dominate the high-end market and uh, AMD is gonna be kind of left with nothing but the budget sort of uh, gaming market and so they're kind of decided to hey if that's all we're gonna have let's go ahead and you know do what we're good at and stick with that or do you think this is uh, you know something part of a grander strategy that they're using which is to go ahead and try and get this market while they can and then when Nvidia has kind of uh, for lack of better words spent their load on the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti uh, come up with something with their Vega infrastructure um, and the, you know their new uh, architecture that's really going to kind of blow blow them away or by that time you know have such a large market of the lower to budget area that it becomes a non-factor so uh, curious to see what you guys think but i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope i didn't ramble on too long uh and i hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend what's left with it bootstrap <laughs>